Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. everyone and welcome back to USA Global TV and Business Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck and our show today is Entrepreneur and so much more. During this show, we will explore all types of possible issues that entrepreneurs face and also the upside of being an entrepreneur. I am so excited, I'm like a little kid ready to do this show because I've got two amazing friends who are here with me for this particular episode. One is our co-host. This is his show. He's a co-host. He's a talking head expert. He is a business owner and he also has a charity. We're going to hear more about him. Let's welcome to the program, Justin Rigliani. Hi, Dr. Jacqueline. How are you? Hi, so good to see you. I'm yeah, so excited. Absolutely. Yeah. The- so, Justin, I am so excited to hear about your story. You are featured in my new book, so I know a little bit about your backstory. We met right. through the Crohn's Colitis Foundation. We've come full circle. Now we have this show together. And we've also got a guy backstage that I really think the world of. Before we bring him out, I want to spotlight you and just have you share some of your background with our audience joining for the first time. Sounds good. Well, first of all, thank you for everybody out there watching and listening. We appreciate it. Um, my name is Justin Rigliani. I am the owner of Just For You Training and Consulting. And I teach people, uh, all different kinds of companies around the world, how to use uh, computer software like Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Word, uh, all different programs. But I also do soft skills classes. I do um, conflict management, team building, uh, communication skills. So that's really what I do uh, day in and day out. And it's been going on now. This is my 23rd year, so it's... (laughs) can't believe I just said that, but yeah, it's 23 years that I've been doing it. And I've been incorporated since 2009. Um, I, not only do we do uh, training at corporations, we do individual training as well. I have people come to my home and we have a, a lunch and learn type of uh, class. And it's really just a lot of fun. And I also run a charity called Checkmates Charitable Association. And that charity is to help folks who are uh, who have inflammatory bowel disease, such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and also those with uh, with an ostomy. I've been an ostomate now for uh, six years. I had ulcerative colitis for 12 and uh, had surgery to uh, remove my colon. And now I live with a permanent ileostomy, but life is, is really good with the bag. I know a lot of people dread that and think that that's a life sentence, but it's not. It really um, is actually liberating. So uh, that's that's what I do. I'm a I'm a father and a husband, and uh, enjoying that, and just great to be a part of uh, USA Global TV. It's an amazing opportunity for me, and you know, uh, Dr. Jacqueline, I thank you for uh, giving me that opportunity. Well, I thank you for being here. I'm learning so much from you. And we said this before one of the other episodes that you as a business owner struggled for some period of time and now your business is doing really well. And I'm just so happy for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It takes time. I think that's one of the things that we we talk about on this show is that it doesn't happen overnight. It does take some time, but eventually you get there if you keep plugging away. Exactly. Uh, My business, I've two businesses and one is only nine months old and the other one I think is two years old. And so I'm still learning. There's so many things you don't even anticipate. And it's nice to have people like you and our guests backstage who can actually be mentors and coaches for the rest of us. You can tell us, hey, that's a yellow flag. That's a red flag or the money's (laughs) coming in. Here it comes. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. 
<laughs> well, I'm going to bring out our guest, and it's interesting because this gentleman is not used to being on this side of the microphone. Uh, he is a co-host here, as I mentioned. He's on the Business Talk Show. He started with me from the very beginning. And for those of you who haven't been aware, we started with the radio, then we started with rapping with Dr. Jacqueline, now USA Global TV. He's the voice of our platform. When you hear the intro, that's him. Uh, he also is a show host over on another channel, RVN Television. He's got a new project, which is The Advocates, and he's a business owner. We're going to bring him out and pick his brain. All right, let's welcome to the program, Mr. Al Sini. Uh, well, well, yeah. It's, it's uh, thank you very much for inviting me to participate today. I guess today I'm on the answer side rather than. Yeah, the I got to move you. I got to <laughs> move you back. Uh, it's challenging, but let me let me say uh, I'm 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 excited about. It. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Nice, well, thanks. nice. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for being here. So, Al, you've been in business how many years? Hmm. Uh, I uh, well, I could. Uh, I've been I've been running a business. I've been in a bunch, but running a business since 1980. So, Benjamin Franklin was one of my first customers. <laughs> long time. Let's just say long time. So uh, yeah, and that's uh, yeah, and I, you know, and I uh, I've learned a few lessons along the way, and I'd be happy to share it with uh, some of the people watching and listening. Fantastic. And Al, you're also a talking head. As I mentioned, you're a talking head expert presenter and people can learn from you on Wednesdays. They can actually watch your program, which is at three o'clock Eastern time. And I appreciate that, too. We've done four so far and uh, yes. somewhere we're going to be doing somewhere between two and 26 more, I think. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> and, and it's a great experience, too, for people out there who might be considering the opportunity. Uh, the Talking Heads platform is a great way for people with a certain expertise to get out there in front of a group of people, an audience. Uh, actually, Dr. Jacqueline's audience is getting pretty big these days. That's a chance to get out there in front of uh, people who really need what you have and uh, a way to help them by offering advice. Also a way of connecting with them uh, to give you an opportunity maybe to, to bid on a project they might have or a solution they might be looking for. So uh, it's a really valuable opportunity, and I greatly appreciate being a part of it. Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. Thank you, Al. I appreciate that. And well, we have you on Spotlight. Can you tell us about BCAT? What is BCAT? Yeah, it's my latest uh, entrepreneurial thing. I mean, I, I uh, we'll, we'll probably get into some of the background because I used to be in the recruiting business and uh, uh, that was a joy. I can tell you some funny stories about that. This is entrepreneurial in that we've developed an approach called the Brand and Culture Alignment Toolkit that aligns people in an organization with the purpose they serve. Now, when I say organization, it could be a whole company or it could be a department within a company or it could be just a couple of people starting out with a partnership. And the goal really is to try to identify whether they're really all singing from the same sheet of music or rowing in the same direction. You know, we have a certain amount of science we've de developed that gives us metrics around that. And we found that those metrics correlate with KPIs that all businesses like to be able to brag about, like profitability and, and uh, productivity. So, so that's BCAT and that's what, that's what I do. And I'm not on uh, USA Global TV. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Al. Um, Justin, you've been in business a long time. Al, you've been in business a long time. I'm relatively new. So I'm going to look to you guys. What are some of the mistakes that you made that uh -oh. you can save us from making? Who wants to start? Uh, I, you know, hey, look. Uh, when it comes to admitting mistakes, you're talking to the expert. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> okay, go for it. All part of it. <laughs> <laughs> it is part of it. And, you know, I mean, I think, um, I think, well, we talked about this just before the program. If, if you think of the job of getting your business off the ground as, the, as like the job of getting an airplane off the ground, you've got to make sure that you have enough fuel to have enough lift at the end of the runway so that when the time comes, you're in the sky instead of in the trees. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that new entrepreneurs make is assuming that somehow what they're going to be doing is so compelling that they'll immediately find a willing audience for what they do, customers uh, that are willing to pay them money. And if you, if you don't, cash flow should be something that you try to bake in. Also, you got to be willing to ask for the money. You can't just assume that people will say, you know what, I think that's worth a couple of grand to me or 50 grand to me or because they won't. Unless you tell them what you charge and unless you tell them what they can expect to pay, 
you're just never going to get the kind of conversation together that you need to pay your mortgage and keep your lights on. So that's my first initial piece of advice. Thanks, Al. And you bring Justin, up some really- you did, though, jump, You jumped right out of the box and you were immediately successful, weren't you? <laughs> oh, absolutely. The first second yeah, I just, was in yeah. Right out. <laughs> and you know what, Al? You, make, you bring up a good point about asking. That's been my biggest hurdle to get over. I, even to this day, I still struggle with the sales, the sales side of the business. It's a, I, I, I don't. Is, is this really worth money? Do I really? Can I really ask for that? And you know, you're so afraid of rejection that you never take the step. Right. right. But you need that. You need to take that step. Absolutely. That's the only way you're going to do it. But yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I think everybody has strengths and, and, and weaknesses. And my weakness, of course, is, is that I don't like to talk about myself a whole lot. So I really have trouble with, with the selling side. One of the, um, one of the things that's toughest to sell is, are the soft skills classes, the classes mm -hmm. where you're teaching uh, conflict management or project management. And I could sell the the computer stuff a whole lot easier. And I think it's because people just don't understand the return on investment with that. 75% of your success in business comes from your soft skills, not, not the hard skills like how good you are at PowerPoint or how great you are at Excel. The soft skills are really about 75 plus percent of, of your uh, success. No, I, I agree with that. I think that... Uh... I think that the ability to hold, have a conversation with somebody, keep their attention without getting too salesy and scaring them off. Right. I mean, there's a kind of a, maybe it's a little bit like fishing. I, I, I always like to think business development, I think, is the biggest challenge for uh, uh, any entrepreneur. That is, how do I find people that are willing to pony up money to, to recognize with their money the value that I offer? Because that really is what you're exchanging. Whatever it is you're doing is something that you have been doing your whole life or something you recently started doing but put a whole lot into before you started it. There's value in that. And it's like you said, Justin, it's not easy to, to say to somebody, I'm sorry, but this is how much it costs. It's And and actually, if you say it that way, then that means you need soft skills training. You're not supposed That's to. That's right. That way. <laughs> I, just before I got on the call with you guys, I was uh, on the phone with a PR company. And they sound pretty promising, and I think we may be able to, we may we may be able to do something. And they said they we, we don't know what we're going to quote you yet, but we are going to quote you something, and we work on a retainer basis. And it was a very pleasant, comfortable. I was not challenged or put off by that at all. I mean, what they're going to do, what they're telling me is that they're worth it, and they're going to bill me for it. Right. You know, and I, I, and they were very comfortable the way they explained it, and I'm comfortable. I mean, I'm not thrilled at the idea of having to write a check. <laughs> but I'll do it if I feel like I'm getting return on that. And I, I understand right. it's the basis on which we all want to understand we're going to go. You don't want to spend a lot of time who are never going to buy from you, but they're going to make you feel happy and comfortable all the way. That's a exactly. great point. That's a great. Yeah. So Good I news. have a question for the two of you. And I've shared this before, but not here. I signed up for a business course and each week an expert was being brought by this person mm -hmm. and the first week it was this woman and I was so impressed with what she had to say that during the, the course, I went over to her website and I just looked and she was charging $7,500 to meet with her for like three hours. And I immediately thought, wow, she's got to be good. I didn't think, oh, is she insane? Right. I thought, oh, she's got to be really good. What could she be telling us for that kind of money? Uh -huh. So my question is, so many people are putting things out there for free. I did it during the pandemic. I was doing everything for free. How do you cross over from free to knowing your worth? Like, is that woman worth 7,500? Well, if people are paying her, she is. Right. No. Well you know, I mean, if she said it was a million bucks for three hours of her time, she wouldn't have to sell very many to make her numbers for the year, would she? That's right. So, exactly. I mean, you, you get the, you get the design. And there are people out there who, for whom spend a day with is a thing. Spend a day with, and I don't want to mention the names, but there are people who feel as though they have a lot of juice and a right. day with them could be $20,000. And they'll hang that out there and say, if you want to spend a day with me, I mean, there's prep work and it'll be a wonderful day, I promise you. And and there are an awful lot of people up. $20,000 is a huge amount of money to shell out to spend a day with anybody. That's I'm right. sorry. So, but I mean, there's a market. I mean, if if it's $20,000 to find the answer, if, you, if you're looking for the meaning of life and 
he or she is the person who can tell you what it is, it could be worth 20 grand to a lot of people. Yeah, but, but I, you know, in my experience, those, well, the free offers are generally free for a reason. That's right. You know, yeah. I mean, there's, they're that's not, exactly they're, right. They don't really, they don't really seem, and that see that a confidence that I think you have to be able to display very quickly in an encounter like that is where everybody's going to be believing the value of their money is going. And as soon as you start asking a lot of questions that don't make any sense or get into a rambling kind of start showing them PowerPoint slides. <laughs> For $20,000, here's eight hours worth of PowerPoint slides I'd like to walk you through. You know, I mean, it really, you, you, you if it's worth something, then you should ask for it. There's no question about that. But you got to be a little careful about it. 7500 bucks. You didn't bite, I'm assuming, Dr. Jackson. You did not? No, I didn't because I was able to get some of the information that she offered somewhere else for less. <laughs> right. Someone she trained right. with. <laughs> so, well, it, it's, I'll tell you, in, in my case, I have been asked by companies, can we have a free class to see how you do this? And then we'll decide from there. I absolutely will not at all do a free class. I have. To me, that's we want to get some free information. We want to take that and run, and and that's it. So I, I will not do it for free because it devalues Smart. what it's worth. Smart. My my thought is, if you're going to pay me the, I, I charge two thousand dollars a day for up to fifteen students. That's really not an outrageous price for that many people. Mm -hmm. So if if you want to test it out, it, it is going to cost you two thousand dollars to find out if I'm worth it or not, right? Well, so there you go. And yeah. you know what? You can invoice me at the end of the day, and I won't pay it if I felt like it wasn't. You know, right. I mean, I don't know whether right. they want that money up front. Did your seventy five hundred dollar person want it up front, Doctor? Yeah, you could pay by credit card. <laughs> right up front. Yeah, up front. Give me the you know, money up front. Still, you could still call, call your credit card company and say, I was just scammed by somebody out of 7500 bucks, expecting right. a lot more than I got. You can. I mean, you know, really, you, the ultimate goal isn't to leave scorched earth behind you by disappointing people over and over again. The, the goal is to make sure that whenever you're pitched anything, you hit it way the hell out of the park. You, you know, especially as an entrepreneur, if you think a single or a double is going to do it for you, you're totally wrong. It's going to have to be a home run. And as you hire people into whatever it is you do entrepreneurially, uh, you're going to have to make sure you set that bar for them. They have to be home run hitters. You know, you really can't. You're going to have to deliver the goods. And as an entrepreneur, you're probably going to have to work harder at, the, at it than anybody who just works for a living. And, I, you know, I think that's really a critical thing to have in mind. Uh, you know, and I, I on you know, while we're on that subject, I mean, Justin, if I if I wanted to learn how to use uh, Microsoft Excel and do a pivot table, right? right? <clears throat> well, I could spend the day with Microsoft Excel screwing around with it, you know, coming up with sample data, doing it wrong 35 times. Right. Or I could sit down with you for an hour and you could just tell me the two or three things I need to know in order to create a pivot table, a table in Microsoft Excel. How much is that worth to me? That's worth a thousand bucks to me. It's right. worth $1,000 to me to learn how to do it right from somebody like you than to just try it over and over again myself. I'm a quick study. I can figure it out, but maybe I don't want to. Maybe right. I'm too busy building my own business. <laughs> that's right. That's that's a good point. There's a lot of time wasted, I think, where people try to go and you know Google it or go onto YouTube and watch videos. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not a bad thing to do. But like you said, that's going to take you a lot more time than sitting for an hour or two with an instructor who's going to show you the steps to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think we, I, so lesson number one is make sure you have enough runway. And lesson number two is make sure if you say you're an entrepreneur, you're at the top of your game. You're not just a B player. I mean, nobody wants an entrepreneurial B or C player. We want entrepreneurial A players. So make sure whatever it is you're offering has the kind of value it takes to, to uh, attract the market of high value individuals who want to invest in you. Don't just toss stuff out at people. I mean, it's, I, you know, it's certainly possible entrepreneurially to get into a manufacturing business that produces a lot of items at a very low cost, and, uh, but enough profit margin to build a, a healthy business out of it. That's, that's a level of uh, entrepreneurial uh, service, uh, entrepreneurial success that you could achieve. Right. But most entrepreneurs these days, I think, are, are people who started out doing something for a living that they were paid for loved what they were doing so much and felt like they were so good at it, they decided to go out on their own, which is the quote, now I'm going to do it myself. Now they're beginning up a ladder of scaling that they need to, you, you can never afford to be comfortable at the rung you're currently on. 
I love you've that. Got to, you've got to keep climbing. I, I don't know, Justin, you've probably seen that yourself. I have. I have. It's, it's, if you get complacent, then it's, it's never going to grow. You're never going to grow. And you have to be willing, <clears throat> pardon me, you have to be willing also to say no sometimes. I'll have a company that will say, well, you know, if, if we do this this way, you know, can we cut cost here? And sometimes I turn things down because they're just, I'm not going to compromise what I'm giving to people. Again, you devalue it. You're, you're telling people really wasn't worth that much. So I'll, I'll kind of slice down for you a little bit. <laughs> well, yeah, I had a guy once tell me, uh, you know, he was being polite, really. It's just a kind of a gigantic asshole. But here we are in this meeting. <laughs> And so he and you run into them as an entrepreneur, by the way, there will be no end of assholes that you will bump into. No, no doubt about that. Right. What you can't allow them to do is to do what they do without. Sometimes they mean it. But this guy asked me what I did and I explained brand and culture alignment. And at the end of it, he said, so people pay you to do that. Wow. That's, that's yes. not the so, most polite yeah. thing to say, but. <laughs> well, you know, but but they're out there. And that's another thing. If you're really an entrepreneur, you're going to have to believe in yourself to the point where you're completely inoculated from idiots like that. Right. But if you believe them, you're never going to you're never going to you're going to fall off the ladder, let alone uh, uh, instead of climbing. So if you yeah. want to stay on the ladder, you got to be able to put up with that. I mean, how many times, Dr. Jacqueline, have people told you this is crazy? Al, how many times did he reach out to you and say, this person's throwing a rock, this person's throwing a boulder? Like they just, who do you think you are? What do you think you're doing? You really think you can, yes, I, this is what I think I'm going, I'm doing it. I'm actually doing you it. You are doing it and you're building an audience and you're making friends and you've got people who are reaching out to you now and they want to be a part of it. This is, that's entrepreneurship means that even though your relatives and your friends and some of those assholes we know that are out there, mm. even though they're going to. There's a Winston Churchill quote that I really love, and it's uh, you'll ne nobody will ever get anywhere if they stop to throw rocks at every dog that barks. Mm. You know, you'll never get anywhere. You just keep doing what you're doing and never let but a lot of especially entrepreneurs. I think there's an entrepreneurial nature here where you want to please people and you maybe fear rejection. So you work a little harder at gaining acceptance than the average person might when somebody comes along and rejects you. You you can't let that poke a hole in the balloon, right? You really can't. So I think that's a right. long runway, thick skin, manage the cash flow, ask for the money, ask for the deal. How about this? So right. you both know that I, you know, if there's 24 hours in a day, most of my day is spent working either behind the screen screen or preparing to be on the green screen uh -huh. or after the green screen. So that's another thing. When you have your own business, it's you have to work. You have to know all aspects of the business. You, you can have an accountant. You should. You can have a lawyer. You should. But you need to know what's going on. Right. Are you oh, doing your homework? That whole idea that you need to do your homework, that you're going to have to uh I mean, some people, I guess, are blessed with the ability to walk in front of a large group of people and just mesmerize them. I mean, some people have that reputation. and I. I but then again, everyone that I've ever known that I thought had that actually spent years preparing for that moment where they right. killed it in front of a group. So that whole idea, don't be fooled into thinking entrepreneurship is easy by an entrepreneur who just makes it look easy. They're it making it look easy because they crossed their T's, dotted their I's. See how many lessons we're coming up with here? That's right. <laughs> a yeah. whole new talking head series. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you got to decide what you can do and what you can't do. So, for instance, when I was looking to get the website done for the charity, I was being quoted 4000 5000 10000 to get the website done. And I asked myself, you know, you, you do computer skills, you teach computer skills in, in all these different areas. Why not just do it yourself? And I was able to do it and build a website that looked good and, and was professional. Good. So that was the case. But then you talk about, you know, you need an accountant or you need a lawyer. I, yeah. There's no way that I could do those things. And so you yeah, have that, to that is that right there, Justin, I think is a really valid point. You, uh, some websites sell things to people. That's e-commerce. Maintaining the inventory on the website is a job. Somebody needs to do that. Maintaining the pricing for those for the inventory, especially these days. With inflation, inflation playing the games it's playing, maintaining those prices to make sure that you're always making enough money. That's a job. That's work. Maybe you farm that out. 
But if you're developing a service or raising money for a charity, it's really just a brochure. You don't have to go. It has to be attractive and clean and neat and simple to navigate. But it, right. the more money you spend on it, the less money you're making, which is crazy dumb. So you need to have a website. Let's say we all accept that. But it doesn't have to be all that. It could be just a website. And you don't have to. And, and don't and think. I, I had by the way, that bullshit out there that, that you've got to spend money to make money. Can I just say that that's bullshit right from the right from the get go? I think you just did. I think I did. And I'm calling bullshit on that. I, I just said bullshit three times on Dr. Jacqueline's program. Oh, my God, I'm using your air. To, I, I, it can go for five. You don't have to spend money to make money. You've got to do things people want it to make money. That's what you have to do. Right. Spending money is an, any expenditure of money needs to be looked at very carefully. Just the whole idea that somehow spending $5,000 on a website is going to get you 5,000 more leads. And if you build a website yourself is a complete fantasy. It's not true. All you need to do is prove to people that you're serious about it. And that's it. You can do that with a website pretty much of any. Am I wrong about that, Justin? No, I don't think you are. I, I think you, you, when you spend money, you have to ask yourself, will there be return on investment with this? And if the answer is, I think so. You know, you've done your homework, you researched it, then yeah, spend the money. But if if you're not sure, or the answer is probably not, it's not worth it. I, you know, I talk about this all the time because if you want a logo, there are logo. There are people out there that'll do a logo for you for a couple of grand. But there's these companies like Fiverr that'll job out the logo to a bunch of kids who are trapped in a cave in Thailand. I mean, literally, that's and while they're in yeah. the cave waiting to be rescued, they'll make logos for people. Right. You know, and, and the logos they'll produce, they could be as little as five or 10 or $15. You can get started as an entrepreneur with very little outlay. What you need to know before you even spend $5 on a logo is what are you selling? What value does it have to people? And how are you going to collect money for that? Those are the questions you need to ask. And you don't have to spend any money for it. You can hire a person from Wharton, a Wharton graduate. You guys know any Wharton graduates? I do. Yes. Well, I wouldn't trust them to watch my cat over a weekend. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible, but it's true. I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to give you all kinds of they're going to give you all kinds of knowledge that doesn't do you any good. I mean, it's it's simpler than they make it out to be. That's right. But the important questions are uh, I need to be asked before you do it at all. And uh, and that I think that's really key. I mean, Dr. Jacqueline, you know that you've got to ask for you now are offering something of value. If somebody wants to be exposed to the audience you're, you've built, you need to tell them how much that's going to cost them and explain to them what they're going to get back from it, what they might get back from it. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. No in the beginning, I had, a, make, I had a hard time. No, there are no that. guarantees. You're right. There are no guarantees. Yes. Yeah. So the website, the logo, these are things that we can get very inexpensively or we can pay a fortune. And the bottom line is, what's the return you're getting? And I know for myself, I've had people from the very beginning, even till now, hey, I don't really like your logo. I don't like the website. I don't like your picture the way it's over. There. Like, no, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. I don't, that's what I say. I don't care. Exactly. Or <laughs> I, if, you're, if, you've, if you've taken one of Justin's emotional intelligence courses, you'll say, thank you for the feedback. I really appreciate the advice. And then you won't care. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. You know, you won't, you won't, skills. the fact that you don't care is nobody's business, but yours. Very true. You know, Very always true. be polite and just say, well, you know, that really is great. I'll take a look at that. I'll have to think about that. That's all. You don't have to give them anything. No. You know, and that, that, you see, that is, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it makes me crazy because there are, uh, frustrates me because there are an awful lot of people out there with great ideas. Yeah, really, really good ideas that probably they're afraid to bring out. Maybe they're, I mean, that's another thing. You kind of have to grow a pair. I mean, yeah. there will be moments when you will look in the mirror and say, are you crazy? <laughs> what is the matter with you? There will be moments when you're just looking at yourself in the mirror and wondering why you even started down this road. And you've got to be able to, got to be able to kind of bluff your, I, by the way, I don't believe in fake it till you make it. I, I believe that maybe you can fake references till you make it. Maybe because after all, you start with zero customers and then you build up from there. Right. Uh, but but I think the idea that what you have to offer is valuable to the entire world is something you can say right up front, right out loud. 
And if you've only got one or two clients that somebody can call for a reference, that's enough. They'll call them and they'll tell you, yeah, she's the real deal. He knows what he's talking about. And that that's enough. You don't have to be doing business with the world in order to be able to sell anybody in the world what you do. That's another great point, Al, that I think uh, I had this issue, too, that as a, a new entrepreneur, we think everyone wants to work with us. Our target market is everyone. No. But that's not correct. Not everyone is going to want to do business with you to buy your service, to be interested. So how do we find the target audience? Anybody have suggestions on that? It's a great question. Well, I'll tell you, in, in my case, I, I have more no's than yeses, but for sure. I mean, it's, that's part of the game. I mean, I, I, I would... Look, if you hit 300 in the major leagues, you're an all-star. Hmm. If you hit 350 in the major leagues, you're a Hall of Famer. That means you're failing 70% uh, of the time or 65% of the time, and you're one of the best. Yeah. So, you know, if you swing the bat and you get the bat on the ball, that's that's important. That's uh, that you want to – and realizing that it's not always going to work out the way you want. But the only right. way you lose this game is by never trying. Right. I mean, if you never pick the bat up in the first place, then you're going to lose the game. And and you said it too, Justin. You just said it. You've you've how many more no's than yeses have you heard in your life? Oh, it's it's a huge ratio of no's to yeses. And, yeah. and your advice to everybody is if that's what you you get over it. You're never <laughs> going to get you're never going to completely snake charm every snake. It's just yeah. not going to work out. So you're going to have to Accept and keep asking, keep trying, don't give up. I, I used to work with a salesman who said that his key to success is he doesn't stop badgering somebody for a sale until they uh, get a protection order out against them. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Restraining said, order. <laughs> when they get an order of protection out against me. That was Joe Asamendi, by the way, he told me. That. Oh, Joe, I love him. Yeah, great guy. And and he said that's just because they said no now doesn't mean they're going to say no in a week or a year. That's true. Right. That's it no, means and, not and, now. And, and if they if you call them enough and they say, oh, for God's sakes, Justin, you're calling me again. I can't believe it. It's as no now as it was last week. If you catch them at the right time after they get off the phone with you and they look at the problem they have and they realize you could solve it, they call you. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. In my corporate you, career, persistence. I, I was selling things, programs that were millions of dollars potentially. And I knew I was going to get a certain number of no's. And I used to, when I was new, a new salesperson, I used to take it personally. And then I realized, no, I've got to get to so many no's before I get to the yes. And it's right. the same way as an entrepreneur. When someone mm -hmm. says no, no, I'm not interested in doing that or being a part of this. I say, great, because I'm getting closer to the yes. <laughs> the next person could be the yes. So it, it doesn't, I don't take it personally anymore. you got to, you got to bounce right back. And that, that is, I say, I think it's, it's hard sometimes for the entrepreneur who has, if it's your baby and people are telling you the baby's ugly, which is pretty much what a no feels like. Right. But if that's your baby, it's hard not to get out there and try to tell them you're looking at, you're not looking at the baby you, the way you need to, you know, you're wrong. The baby's beautiful. It's hard to, it is hard to cope with that. I think. So sometimes when you hire a sales, oh, Let's talk about hiring salespeople. Can we talk about that? Yes, go ahead. Nobody will waste your sure. money or your time more than a bad salesperson. <sighs> it is the most important choice you'll ever make. If you get to the point where you say, I can't sell, I'm not, not me. I'm not the person who can sell. You're, then your instinct will be, I'm going to get some money, raise some money. I'm going to hire a sales team. Let me tell you where that lands almost all the time. After six months of spending money on and getting nothing, they're going to look at you and blame you and your crappy product for why they're not able to get traction on the sales. Right. Am I wrong about that, Justin, or why? I haven't had a lot of experience with sales teams as far as my business goes, but that makes that makes sense. They're not going to I accept have. the have it. <laughs> I have. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to take the blame, right? They're not going to accept the. I'm uh, speaking from the heart. And they need to be watched the way a hawk watches its prey. And I, I know it's terrible to say that, but you just delegate selling to somebody else and then check back in with them three months later. <laughs> You're out three months of salary and, and they're still saying they need another six months. Oh, now I, now I understand what it is you want from me. You know, you'll, you, will, you will pour money down that hole forever. If you if you can't sell it yourself, and I'm, and this is a tough lesson for entrepreneurs to learn, if you yes. can't sell it yourself, you'll never be able to hire anybody to sell it for you ever. 
Because when you do hire somebody who may be struggling trying to sell it for you, you're going to have to be able to explain to them how you did it. What you what you communicated to a prospect that caused them to make the decision in your favor. You're going to have to impart to them the secret sauce that got that first client for you. And that's got to be you. It can't be somebody else who magically does it for you. There's no David Copperfield in entrepreneurship. No magic. Nobody makes the Statue of Liberty disappear. Nah, nah. It's, it's work and it's common sense. And I hate to say trust no one, but trust no one. As soon as you delegate anything to anybody, they will drop the ball. Guaranteed, I promise you. You can hand them the ball, but watch how they handle it. And if it looks like they're starting to drop it, grab it back away from them. Yeah. So that's another really good point that I want to go. Well, we're almost out of time. I can't believe it. So fast. as an entrepreneur, you typically do everything yourself. Ah. And yeah. at some point, you have to hire people, whether it's virtual assistants, whether it's a sales force. So when do yeah. you make that leap? And you just shared with us that if it's sales, you got to be watching them like a hawk. Because So now you're taking the time you're going to use for something else and you're babysitting. So what's right. one to do? I don't know, Justin, you want to tackle that one? That one's scary. <laughs> I mean, people ask me all the time, why do you do everything? You know, why, why yeah. do you, why did you build the website? Why do you do all the promotion? Why do you do all the sales? Why do you do, you know, the uh, paperwork for the IRS? Because I don't want to pay somebody else to do it. And I, I know that I can do it and get it done. And same thing with the charity. We, we play, uh, Al, I don't know if you know about our charity, but we play uh, NHL alumni uh, hockey games, celebrity hockey games. Great. Until COVID once a year. <laughs> COVID kind of uh -huh. knocked that out. But I, I, I did everything. I set up the tickets, the online tickets, uh, you know, build the team, get the jerseys and the, and the uniforms together, get the pros, uh, uh, find the hotel, get the food for the night. And people say, well, why are you doing it all? You know, can't you delegate that to somebody else? And it's like, well, you know, I, if I can do it, why should I pay somebody else to do it? That's a really good. Right. Wait, I so I want to, I want to put something out there before we go over to Al. So people sure. have said to me, oh, you've said, you, me, you've said that you want your platform to be bigger than Oprah's so that you can give a car to everyone. Well, do you think Oprah does everything? And I said, <laughs> no, but I'm not Oprah. <laughs> So, no. And their point and, is, well, and, you're never going to be it if you keep doing everything. And, and by the way, when you're in the media business and you build a platform that millions of people watch, you don't give away the car either. GM does. Right, right. GM is giving that car away, not Oprah. Oprah's not out of pocket, trust me, on any of that. Because everything she gives away is something a million people out there are going to want to buy a copy of. Right. To be just like the person who won it. I mean, that's. When your audience, and it's just a matter of time, Dr. Jack, when your audience gets to be that big, there's value in that. And that value is it, that's ma massive. mountain moving value. Yes. That's when all of a sudden now people are hitching a ride on your wagon because they know you're going to get them where they want to go. If I want to sell 20,000 cars this year. I'm going to have to get in front of the millions of people that watch Dr. Jacqueline and give one away. So that we can spotlight it and showcase it, and Vanna White can wave her arm in front of it, and everything. And and some and the voice of uh, USA TV can say 1922, 2022, 1900. Oh my God, forget it. That's how old my car is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but think about that. It's got this. It's got this. It's got this. That's an ad right. embedded inside of your product. Exactly. So I know somebody who who actually though. got a car on Oprah. How about that? Really? No kidding. A, a friend of mine, yeah. She was she was at the show. They gave away yeah. a Volkswagen bug. <laughs> yeah, well, Very and cool. and then they, and then they get I don't know what the W nine form is for that, but they get a form that says this is how much the car uh -huh. costs, what they owe taxes on. Oprah doesn't pay that. No, no. <laughs> but so when is the no. point where we go from doing everything like Justin? You were just saying you do it yourself because you can. I'm doing all the things I can because I can also, but there's more things I want to do and I don't have enough time in the day. I'm now in the process of, Al, you're going to love this, finally building out the university for people to sell their courses. And it's not going to be university, it's going to be some other name. Good. And I finally figured out how to do it myself. But I need some extra hands and some arms and some eyes and legs. But but to Justin's point, when you when you have the cash flow to hire somebody to handle the, the whatever it's going to be called, the university for you, 
When you have the cash flow to hire somebody to do that, you will know what that work entails. And if anybody ever feeds you the crap, well, it's going to take me at least a month to get this up and running. Uh -huh. You'll know it's horseshit because you built it yourself in two days. <laughs> So maybe right. maybe they can't do it in two days. Maybe that's how good you are. But when they give you that crap, it's going to take me at least a month to do that. What they're saying is, I found a home. You're going to pay me for two months. I'll get a mortgage payment, a car payment out of it. God only knows if you'll actually have what it is I said I was going to do in a month. Right. Right. You know, and that is that is that's what when I mean watch them like a hawk. I mean, you're paying them to get something, not to do something for you. You're paying them to get something done for you. There's a huge difference. Say that again, Al. Oh, I'm sorry. Now here I am spotlighted, so I get to say that again. Say there that. is a gigantic difference. There's a gigantic, very important difference between doing things and actually getting things done. So when, when you're managing employees, when you've delegated something to somebody, it's the outcome you're watching, not the activity. Right. I don't ever want to hear from anybody, oh, my God, I spent 60 hours doing that last week. What I want to hear is, here it is. It's up and running. Yeah, it's done. It worked. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. You can sell it now or you can uh, make it available. Now, that's what I want to hear. Oh, my God, what a day I had today. I'm sorry. I don't have the time for that. And any entrepreneur that has the time for that kind of conversation is going to fail. It's not going to work. I mean, I started out in the recruiting business. I, I don't know whether we, I used to make I don't know whether um, I don't know whether you know much about the recruiting business. But, you know, back in the in 1980, when I started out in it. The job is pretty simple. You find somebody that has a good resume. You find somebody who has a job that needs to be filled. You make a connection. Happy days are here and gone, right? So you'd figure that's it. That's all there is to the recruiting business. I can't tell you how many times we placed somebody on a job who never even showed up for the job. Yes. Where they were expected to come in on a Monday morning and Monday came and the client is calling and saying, where's your guy? Where's Where's this lady you said was going to solve our problems? And then you have to make a, you have to put out an APB and a bolo to find somebody. <laughs> and, 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 and somebody explained to me once that recruiting, and I'm picking on recruiting because you got to be realistic about everything you do. Imagine, and the guy, and I was sharing with him my heart, my stories of heartbreak of people who we would find jobs for, but then they just wouldn't perform. And that was, it happened, didn't happen every time, but it happened and often enough Often enough that I remember every time. <laughs> I really remember every case. So this friend of mine said, well, imagine you go to the Wegmans or any supermarket and you're walking along the coffee aisle and you see all these coffee brands arrayed. I mean, there's miles of them, in a, uh, especially in a big box store. You see all these coffee brands and you're trying to figure out which is the best coffee for you. You finally, after you Google it, you settle on Folgers and you pick up a can of Folgers and you put it in your cart. And the can of Folgers looks up at you, uh, looks up at you, and says, "I'm sorry, I don't want to go home with you. <laughs> Put me back on the shelf." <laughs> you know, imagine a world where the product gets to decide whether you're worthy of it. I don't believe you're worthy of me. I'm an excellent telephone. Why am I even bothering to go home with you? I need to go home with Justin. I need somebody more committed to me as a phone. You, you guys follow what I'm talking about? I, I am. Yeah. It's people. And people, I don't want to say they need to be watched. I don't want to say, I remember I said trust no one before. That's me failing at, I guess it's emotional intelligence. And so obviously I need a remedial class in that. <laughs> I'm only telling you and the people watching and listening in because they will work and work and work and get nothing done. They will. And unless they've got some reason to stop that pattern of just doing things and not getting things done, if their work goes uninspected, they will just continue to do that because it's comfortable for them. And it's actually not even their fault. Comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Most people, most people are just, they want a job and they'll do the job, but you need to, you, you got to be focused, laser focused on what is getting done, not just on what is being done. And that really, to me anyway, I don't, I don't know whether you saw it any differently in what you do, Justin, but. No, I agree. And you know what? I, I actually started just for you as a placement service. That's that's what we were uh, when I first started because uh -huh. I had done HR. And you're right. We had people who we would interview and you'd ask them, you know, what, what are your skills? And they put their skills on the resume. They would tell you everything in the interview. I could do this. I could do that. I could do that. And then the next thing you know, they couldn't do that. And it's you like, well, you find that out now. Now, at that point, your client's calling you saying, I thought exactly. you said this is a database guy. I thought you said this is a. A user interface person, you know, but uh, 
Yeah, you don't find and, out until then. It's you're dealing. Did you with find that most people lied? I did. I found that most people grossly overestimated what they were able to do on their resume. That's. I'm sure there's research that bears that out. <laughs> no doubt about it. I, in fact, there is, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you where you can go to learn more about this. And it's there's actually a, it's an interviewing technique. But there is this thing called the uh, Dunning Kruger effect, and uh, yeah, it. you, it's been observed. You may have heard of it, Justin. I don't know. I about. have. I have. Okay. The more somebody brags about how good they are at something, the less good they are at it. I mean, the more they brag about how much they know about doing something, the less they actually know about getting it done. The less they know. So when you get when you a red flag when you're talking to somebody about how good they are at something, a red flag is a lack of humility. When they just talk about how they're the best at it without ever really getting quite specific. And remember, you're trying to fill a hole uh, for an organization. You want to make a placement, so you you have a vested interest in accepting what they say, which which means you're going to lure yourself into this kind of a trap that they're going to set for you. Yeah. I'm here to tell you that the more they brag about how good they are at something, the less good they actually are at it. Yeah, that's a great mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. That is a great point. And also, Al, the other point about, because I've had this with people I've worked with come in contact through my career. It's, oh, I'm so busy. I spent so many hours working this. I couldn't even do anything over the weekend because I was working on this. But yet they never finished this. They didn't give you mm -hmm. what they were supposed to be giving you. But they spent a lot of time. But, and, and and how easy is it to fall for the pitch that we've done it a million times before and you're no more challenging and these are all the wonderful things we've done in the past and this is what we intend to do with you, for you. You're a busy person who's trying to reach an outcome or trying to achieve something. You're you're an easy mark for somebody that overpromises and underdelivers. delivers and It's very easy to fall into that. And there are plenty of, and the, the, those people, they, I don't even want to say they're evil. They're just common. Very it's not common. that they're evil people out there to scam yeah. you. Because if you ever ended up in court, their story would be so cloudy and hazy that you'd probably end up owing them more money. <laughs> so uh, it's just courts, justice will never work for you. It's just a legal system. It's not a justice system. That's another, yes, contracts are important. But keep in mind, any contract that you've got to go dig up later is never going to protect you from whatever it is that's happening now. That's right. I've never been protected by any agreement I ever had with anybody from a foul up that was on me just because they signed the contract. Face it, deal with it. Well, you're kind of, the contract said we we're only going to give you this. If what they thought you were going to give them was more than what the contract says, guess whose fault that is? Yours, <laughs> not theirs. That's right. Yours, not theirs. And so you've got to be suspicious. That's the trust no one watch, watch them like a hawk. For top, boy, I feel like listen at the end of this. If you if you wanna if you wanna talk to me, you can reach me at al.cini at getbcat.com. If you want to argue with me, it's Dr. Jacqueline at USA <laughs> <laughs> So my question then is it, it's expanding on what you're both saying is how do you know when to trust other people if there are all these you know, hawks, not hawks, but people that have to be watched. You have to be a hawk over all these people. How do you know who and when to trust? It, you have to know, I think you have to be really clear on what you expect from them. And you've got to remind them of that every chance you get. Now, that's not necessarily meaning that you call them 10 times a day saying, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I've never believed in that. But, but deals are not made based on the fact that I like you. Or based simply on the fact that I trust you and I believe you can do this. Right. This is what I expect, and this is when I expect it. And you're agreeing to deliver that on that date. That's you've got to be really crystal clear when whenever you delegate anything to anybody that that is, especially in the early days of entrepreneurship, because you can't afford to miss any of your marks. If you turn it over to somebody else, you want to make sure that they understand it's getting it done and not just doing it that you're looking for. They need to know that you're holding them to a higher standard than most people hold each other to. And I, I think people want to believe other people. One of the, my biggest things for me that, that's been very successful is sincerity. I, I know a lot of people won't take the time or feel comfortable admitting certain feelings. Um, I, I write heartfelt letters to people when I feel like I can work with them, when I feel like that there's something that we can mutually do together. Like sure. We had Ralph Benershko on the first show that that we did. And, uh, 
you know, I had just gotten my colon removed. I had this ostomy bag and I wrote Rolf a letter and I, I was very sincere about the letter. I told him exactly why I admired him and how much he did for me, even though Great. we didn't even know each other. And it wasn't a put on. It wasn't, you know, I, oh, I, I hope Rolf hires me to, to become this, uh, you know, no. uh, big player in his in his uh, business. But I really meant it. And I think that's what he saw. And, and f a few months later, the phone rang and it was Rolf on the other line. But and that's how, you know, listen, I, I would never, I honestly believe that loving your work and loving the people you do that work with is key. That's brand and culture alignment. You've got to love what you do. You've got to love, especially as an entrepreneur, you've got to love what you do. And you've got to love the people that you're doing it with. Uh, that said, I have another example story, Justin, uh, kind of goes along with a letter that I once wrote to an employee of mine, a, uh, almost like a partner of mine, who um, took a client from me after about five years of working with me, just called up my client and said, I can do it cheaper. Literally, wow. I can do it cheaper. So I was hurt and I was upset and I wrote a really heartfelt multi-paragraph letter. I mean, then this was before email. So you were actually going to stick a stamp on it and mail it. Right. And um, and then I called our lawyer and the lawyer said, well, read it to me. <laughs> and I did. How could you do this? And I feel upset. And you're, I thought we were friends. I mean, I, I can't remember everything I put in it, but I was hurt and I wanted sure. him to know I was hurt. So the lawyer said, uh, give me a crack at it. Tell you what, give it, don't send it yet. Give me uh, till the end of the day and I'll send you my version, right? And he did. And his version was, you're in violation of your employee agreement. <laughs> Stop doing what you're doing right now or we're gonna sue your nuts off. Basically, <laughs> that's what the letter said. And to the, the point. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and like, I think my point is there is a time and place for everything. Yes. And and just doing the thing that makes you feel comfortable while it can be very effective, you know, when you're when you're trying to bring somebody around to your way of thinking. And, and Justin, I'm sure that was a beautifully worded letter and very sincere. And you got to do that yes. every now and then. If you love what you do and you love the people you do it with, you want to thank them for the work they do. You want to praise them for the job they do. You want to recognize the fact that they helped you with something. I, I'm not that cold. You know, I mean, you got to do that. <laughs> But at the same time, you've got to be vigilant and your antennae have to be up for those occurrences, those, those occasions that require a more direct approach. And you've got to be unafraid to offer that when the time comes. That's it. I mean, I the hardest thing I ever had to do was fire somebody until I learned how to do it. Right. You know, and then, did so, you have and, on that? What's that? Any suggestions you can give our audience yeah. on that? Have First of all, make sure there's somebody else in the room when you're doing it. Don't do, never do it alone. Absolutely. You want Great to win the yeah. event. Absolutely. One, the fewer words you use, the better. You can explain why it is they're being terminated and maybe even refer to warnings that they may have received leading up to that point. But the end of the conversation is I'm really sorry. This, this didn't work out. I had high hopes for it. I wish you luck wherever you land, but you're just not a good fit here. And that's it. And then allow the silence to sit never feel like you need to fill silence that you've left with anything because every other word you say other than you're fired is something they could take you to court over. Mm. Every other word, you want the minimum number of words necessary and a witness to make sure they don't claim that you said more words than you actually did. Is that terrible? No, it makes a no, lot of sense. Terrible. That's how it's, it's terrible. It's reality. That's how it's done in that reality. But an, an awful lot of entrepreneurs are young and young guys are very big into, uh, they don't want to hurt people's feelings. You know, and I get that. But but first of all, you want to do it as soon as it becomes apparent that you're barking up the wrong tree. You don't want to let it linger because every penny you spend on whoever it is you're about to fire is going to be wasted. Just fire That's them right. now rather than three paychecks from now or even one. Uh, and second of all, when you when you do it, just make sure you're clearly understood why. That's it. You're, you're, I'm firing you because, and it, it could be something they did or something they continue to not do, but you want to deal with that and address it immediately. And then end the conversation. There's no more, no more talk. That's it. We're done. That's a breakup really. And you kind of have to get familiar, get comfortable with that. I, Can you fire someone and not say it's based on performance? We're downsizing or our direction is different than where we were. You have to tell them the truth though. 
you can't lie. I mean, if you're downsizing, you got to be prepared. If they file a, an action, you got to be prepared to explain that you were downsizing. And, and that's not considered a firing, right? When you're downsizing. Yeah, that's different. That's a layoff. That's, and that's, yeah. Uh, okay. But even then, I mean, that's something else. If it's a small organization, there's no reason why you have to do that by email. I mean, I, I'm, no. I'm watching this thing on, um, it's called We Crash, which is kind of a drama on Apple TV. It's a really interesting to watch. And there's one point where it becomes obvious they just need to lighten the load. And so the shot is from outside, everybody at We Crash with the all getting pinged at the same time with the email that tells them they're fired. <laughs> right. And so they're all getting it and they're all reading. Oh, I just lost my job. Did you just lose your job? They're doing that. And then right after that, they brought in Cool J, I think, and had a had a party for the survivors. They brought in LL Cool J or some rap group or some rock group and they had a party for the survivors. I, there are wrong ways to do it. That's a really great example of a wrong way to do it. Yeah. Right. How did they have the money to afford him or them and they couldn't keep pay their it's people? It's obvious to anybody. If you can afford, uh, if you can afford to bring in a, a, and serve everybody who didn't get laid off a steak, if you can have a big steak dinner for the people that you did lay off, then you could have maybe saved one or two of the people that you did. Everybody right. sees that, including the survivors, by the way. I mean, often they'll they'll end up resigning first chance they get because now they know something about you you never wanted them to know. Right, you don't value them as people. Uh, they don't matter. It's obvious that they don't matter to me. It was more important right. to have this party and invite them. I don't even know half their names. I don't care. You you should watch it. It's really very instructive. That and uh, just just because a fool and his money are lucky enough to get together in the first place. You know, the thing I, that I see a lot is people will get a, quote, title, and they don't get a raise. You know, oh, they made me VP of this. Well, who cares? I don't. I can't take that to, that to the supermarket or to the car I, dealership. You know, I don't uh, care. I want to be a do. senior trainer or a senior right, right. or a consulting senior trainer or consultant. I know. Right. You in can make up any company, title you want. You titles in anybody's cards. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have yeah, to share this. In my corporate career, I was always in sales. I always had a number that I had to hit. I had a quota. That was it. I was in sales, but I was a uh, sales executive, vice president of business development, like all these titles. And people actually right. spent time coming up with the titles. And the bottom <laughs> line was my package was exactly the same, but the numbers that I had to hit kept going up. I had no authority. I'm empowered, but no one was reporting to me. If, if you want to be the supreme allied commander of, uh, of uh, employee placement, if that floats your boat, I'll put that on your card for you. I'm not going to give you another penny uh, unless you show me that you're worth it. But but you don't even want to have that conversation. I mean, if you don't have a if you don't have a title on your card, why should anybody who reports to you want a title on theirs? So and that's why in all the small companies I've ever run, I, I'm pretty sparse with the whole idea of titles if they're actually employees. If they're representatives of the company at different levels, that's different. But uh, but employees, I think you can run a small company very successfully without anybody ever having an actual official title in their cards. And Al, one other topic I want to hit just quickly because I see we're we're closing in on the time. You're really good at social media on LinkedIn. You do a lot of LinkedIn posts, sharing of posts. What mm -hmm. are your thoughts about this for entrepreneurs? And Justin, I'd love for you to weigh in too. Uh, there are the two kinds of entrepreneurs. If you're an entrepreneur who offers something that everybody is familiar with, but they get it more cheaply or more efficiently from you, then social media presence, is, frankly, isn't all that important. What you need to do is find people who are overpaying for what you do or who are not happy with the service that you compete with. So if you're, if you're on the other hand, if you're starting a conversation that people have never heard before, brand and cultural alignment is like one example of that then you really do need to get out on a continuing basis with stories that reinforce the benefits of what you provide. That's social media posting. And it's worth getting in the habit of doing that three or four times a week, but only once to talk about how great you are versus four times to talk about the problem that you solve that other people are having and how maybe they solve it or address it. Does that so help? Yes, it's very helpful. So when we see people who are always posting about how great they are and how great their company is, the perception is ego. If if I post about how wonderful Justin's training services are, 
that's 10 times more powerful than if he posts about how wonderful his training services are. 10 times more powerful. If I say I work with Justin Ann, dot, 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 and I fill that in with taught me things I wouldn't know any other way, that has tremendous power. That is very effective. If Justin talks about it, eh, not so much. Everybody kind of expects that. From <laughs> so, so, so when I get out there and talk about how wonderful it is to work with Dr. Jacqueline or with Justin, and I mean, we can, we can make a little deal here where we'll just say wonderful things about each other on social media. Not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and that actually leads to referrals, which isn't a bad idea. That's so you, know, you want to you find, find a couple of people that you don't compete with who have a lot of faith in what you do. Let them tell your story. And help by telling their story for them, whatever their story might be. And Al, how much time would you say you spend on a weekly basis on LinkedIn posting things? About four hours, three hours, maybe four hours, some weeks more, mostly. I mean, a lot of it is, um, and I, I should do more of it, frankly, for USA Global TV. A lot of it is, I'm going to be on this. I hope you'll join me. You know, when, when you've got this kind of platform, you want to make sure people are out there knowing that you're doing it. I mean, that's important. That's a, kind of an exception to the rule. But then again, I'm not bragging about me so much as I'm bragging about the guest or thanking Dr. Jacqueline for the opportunity and talking about USA Global TV. I yeah, mean, I who really does go a long way when it comes to that? That's really critical. And, you know, I, I might, uh, and when I, when I brag about this one, I might apologize in advance for a couple of the points I made that might offend people. <laughs> Hopefully that'll get a couple of hundred people to watch. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Definitely. So I think just to conclude on the part of the social media, because there are many business owners I've interviewed, we've interviewed, spoken to, oh, I don't need to be on social media. I don't want to do social media. You need to find time and put it in your calendar yes, every yeah. day. Or if you can't do it every day, every day makes it easier because it's less time. But you want to get yourself out there by acknowledging what other people are doing. Promoting full, other con, full confession, I got out, got out there recently and created an account on Instagram. And I know Dr. Jacqueline. I saw that. Be, I was like, what? You're, you're one of me. I know. You're one of maybe 14 people that follow me on Instagram. And it'll probably <laughs> never be any more than that. I don't know what any of those icons mean. And I really don't have a whole lot of patience for them. And I probably won't do a lot on Instagram. But LinkedIn, if you're in the business to business uh, sector, uh, you want people to get to know you. LinkedIn is a good place. But you got to remember... A lot of the people that have accounts on LinkedIn never check their accounts. Right. They don't. I mean, you know, a lot of the people that do check their accounts are people out there trying to sell something to somebody. So just because you're posting on social media doesn't mean that the world is going to be path to your door. You are going to go, have to go out and make friends. So if you just think putting a couple of posts on social media is going to be enough, you might get a couple of conversations out of that. But all the business I've ever gotten has been from somebody who said, I hear you do this. What do you charge? When can we start? And I didn't meet them on LinkedIn. Maybe they saw something on LinkedIn, but that wasn't the reason why they came. They came because they heard it was good or or they heard from somebody yeah. that I did it for that you want to call him because he, he has this magic trick he does. You know, and that that's that's what that's where all the really that's where the deals get made. And thank you for that. I want to just add on to that and then we'll close out. So many times on LinkedIn, I guess as a result of this platform, people send me a connection, you know, Dr. Jacqueline, I saw your profile, whatever. And sure enough, right after I accept it, they want to sell me something. I get it's a pretty exactly. populated uh, thing that gets sent to you. And it's all uh, about, and by the way, it's this long. It's like, we do. I don't this, even read do them. This, so I just delete it. But I, why I, I, are well, that's, doing that? Can you know? I'm so glad you said that because that is. I mean, we're back and we're bad at back on the subject of bullshit again. You know, if if just because you heard a tweet from a from a nest, you think you can go in and make a chicken dinner out of somebody. <laughs> that's a great one. You know, <laughs> really. I mean, because that's how I feel. Yeah. That's so true. How did I? How did I? How did I end up on your menu? Because that's how that's how anybody yeah. who gets one of those messages feels. How did I end up on your menu? And not much better than that is I see we have several mutual connections. Oh. On LinkedIn. I thought I would reach out and say, please tell me how I can help you, which is really another way of saying, I got a list of things I want you to consider. Yeah. And as soon as you reply to me, I'm going to hit you with all of them. So, you know, I mean, people, people aren't stupid and don't underestimate them. Now, maybe you need stupid clients for what you're selling and maybe that works for you, but there's, you want to make friends. 
you want to make, especially in the line of the kind of lines of work we're in, you want to make friends and you want to keep friends. That means keeping knowing what you're promising and keeping your promise every goddamn time. Yep. Never drop the ball. And if you do, confess immediately. Admit it. I'm sorry. What can I do to make this better? Usually it won't be you dropping the ball. It'll be one of those people you're supposed to be watching. Exactly. Well, I have to say we have at least 20 episodes for Talking Heads right here. So, <laughs> Honestly, there you go, right? Exactly. For sure. <laughs> at least. Al, I'm going to spotlight you. Thank you so much for being here and for spending yeah, this extra time. Thank really so great much. meeting you, Justin. We'll get together for coffee in New Jersey sometime. Sounds great. Sounds great. Yeah. And if I could just share with that. with our audience, we are all going to be together at a special event called Take Steps. I'm actually going to run the clip. I've been running any clips today. Uh, an event called Take Steps. It's at Lincoln Financial Field. And you can see that we have Philadelphia background here. And if you would like to join our team, we're going to be broadcasting live. What's required? You sign up for the team, Dr. J's Kaleidos Crew. You make a donation. You show up. <laughs> <laughs> pretty easy. It's pretty easy, and it's a fun-filled day. So let me just find the clip. Here it is, and then we'll close out. Good. That looks like fun. And I'm assuming we don't have yeah. to do any of that. <laughs> no, there's none no. of that. <laughs> That's helpful to know. And when we raise $5,000, we get to actually tour the Eagles locker room, the Philadelphia Eagles. But Good. aside from that, we still get to run through the tunnel. Woo! And we get That's to walk cool. around the field. And uh, Preston Elliott's going to be there. He's the MC from, I think, WMMR. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And we're going to have our own booth, USA Global TV. And you'll see the three of us there broadcasting, uh, among others who might join us. So That's it's exciting. It's I, a, I, lot a lot of, of fun. fun. I'm glad I signed up. I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be a lot of I'm fun. I'm glad you signed up, too. It's great. Yeah. Good. Uh, Al, people can see you here on this platform on Wednesdays. And they can see you at RVN Television on Fridays. Friday mornings. Okay. Uh, and uh, also the Advocates is on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock, also on rvntelevision.com. So, By the way, I saw on April the 12th, you have a webinar coming up, I believe at one o'clock, which I'll be signing up for. We we do. And if if you can go to get BCAT, thank you, Dr. Jacqueline, you are a peach. And I appreciate you bringing that up. If, if you can go to getbcat.com slash exchange, all lowercase exchange, the whole word. What we're doing is uh, starting, and that'll be our first ever on April 12th at 1 o'clock. That's Wednesday at 1 o'clock. It's our first ever. Um, yep, you got it. That's good. Thank you. Uh, perfect. If you go to that, if you go to that URL, that's our first ever, the Advocates Exchange, which is a meeting, a Zoom meeting, where we'll take somebody who's appeared on the program or is about to appear on the program, talk about what they're advocating. And then review with the people who are in attendance how that might be a benefit to them or what they might be able to offer by way of adding to that. The goal really is to connect people who have a passion for changing the world in a positive way. It could be business, could be charitable, it could be individual coaching. If you feel as though you've been successful at helping other people become better people or become better companies, uh, we want you to join. We want to hear how you did it. We want to, we, and we want you to hear how some of our advocates do it. So. That's the Advocates Exchange, and it's next Tuesday at 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Fantastic. And awesome. also on Tuesday, the 12th, we have the Talking Heads panel. So you'll be there for that. You better get some rest. I, uh, I'm going to uh, think I'm not going to do anything else on Tuesday except just those two things. That's it. Fantastic. I'm excited about that. I think that will be a lot of fun. Thank you. I'm excited as Looks well. Like Thank it. you. I'm just going to put your banner up one more time. And for people who are listening on the radio or they cannot read the banner, what is the best way to get into? Oh, I have the wrong banner. Sorry. Who's producing the show? What, is the, course, best, course. what is the best way for people to get in touch with best, you? The best way to reach me is al.cini, A L dot C I N I at getbcat.com. That's email. Or we have a toll free number, 855 999 BCAT, which 
comes out to 2228 for people who don't like to spell with their phones. I uh, really <laughs> understand that. Old school. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So there it is. And and uh, I'll look forward to hearing from you. Remember, our, our job is to build teams around purpose. That's what we do. When, when, that's my entrepreneurial uh, kind of climb. And I'm happy to talk about any aspect of that you'd like. Thank you, Al. That's awesome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you here. We'll see you on Wednesday. It was great meeting Justin. Always a pleasure working with you, Dr. Jacqueline. Thank you for inviting me. And we'll get together on how the three of us are going to promote each other's work on LinkedIn. We got to to work this out on social media, but definitely. Absolutely. Cool. (laughs) Friends helping friends. Absolutely. Thank you, Al. Thank Um, you. Good night. Take care. Bye. That was so much fun, wasn't it? It was. It really was. He's a great guy. He is a great guy. And as I said, he's been with me from the very beginning and I will always have a special place in my heart for him. Justin, I want to put up your banner. You are just truly amazing. I know you've been going through a lot. You have a lot of, of things that you are making happen in this world. So I appreciate the fact that you are on our team as a co-host and your talking head series is coming up in May. Tell us about that. Yeah. So we're going to do uh, six shows talking heads. We're going to, um, A lot of it's going to be about what I do every day, where I'm going to teach people different lessons. Might do one on, as Al mentioned, pivot tables. It's funny he said that. That's one of the ones I had in my head. And I'm going to just present and show people the things that they can be doing and uh, how, um, I don't want to say easy, but how even if you don't think you're a computer person or if you don't think you're this or that, you can learn things that that are brand new. And uh, I can be reached at, um, uh, I'll give you my email address. It's uh, Justin at just for you. It's all spelled out. J U S T F O R Y O U T C dot com. The charity is Checkmates Charitable Association. That is uh, www.checkmatescharity.com. And the email for that is Justin at checkmatescharity.com. And my cell number is 610-324-5545. If you reach out, if you want to help with the charity, that's great. Be happy to have you. Anybody who needs to get their uh, their group up to speed on computer skills, soft skills, better presentations, uh, conflict management, that's what we do at Just For You TC. So, uh, you know, please reach out. We, we, we do a lot of work. And uh, most of it is me doing the training, but I do also hire some... Um, contractors for jobs that uh, I just can't get to. So um, I I have have a good group of people. So it's exciting. Justin, the phone number again, 609? Uh, No, uh, 610-324-5545. Thank you. Okay. We've got Justin at checkmatescharity.com. We've got your cell phone number and we've got Justin at justforutc.com. That's it. All right. Fantastic. Okay, Justin, anything that you want to share with our audience about the upcoming event, June 12th? The the walk, yeah, on June 12th, uh, Take Steps. We, uh, as, as most of people know now that have seen the show, Jacqueline and I both have a history with inflammatory bowel disease. And I myself uh, had ulcerative colitis for 12 years and then lost my colon, rectum, and anus to uh, colitis. It was becoming precancerous. Um, so I live with an ileostomy and um, the Take Steps does a lot of great things for people who have been in our boat, who are in the boat that we were in back then and those who are coming in the future. Um, unfortunately, inflammatory bowel disease is increasing, especially in kids under 18. Part of that is through better diagnostics, but also because the disease is becoming more prevalent. So the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation really do an amazing job to try to help find a cure or if not even a cure, a way to help people go at least get into remission or be able to live with their disease and, um, you know, hopefully save people from having to go through what, what I have. Um, and that takes steps on um, June 12th is, is to raise money for the Crohn's Colitis Foundation of America and the Philadelphia chapter is putting it on a great time. We have a lot of really people there now we'll be working there uh interviewing people it's it's uh part of what the crohn's colitis foundation does is they send kids to a special camp called camp oasis and these are for kids who have grown up and are living with inflammatory bowel disease uh 
sadly, this community is one that really is not seen very well. Um, it's it's not a disease that people like to talk about. It's a quote or what people think is a bathroom disease. It's so much more than that. But um, we really need people to be aware. Uh, Money is great and very, very important, but awareness is, is just as important. So uh, that Take Steps event is going to be something really special. So if anybody wants to come out and join us, please do. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. And I just want people to know that in addition to Justin having this charity, how passionate he is, he came and joined me for Dr. J's Kaleidos Crew for the Spin for Cures event. And when I asked him to join for Take Steps, he said, absolutely donated right away. And he's just committed to it. So I was diagnosed in 1999 and with ulcerative colitis. I've lived probably six months of every year with a flare. And I would say I lived in shame and silence for most of my life until 2018 when I met the people from the Crohn's Colitis Foundation, the actual employees in the Philadelphia, Delaware chapter. And my life changed dramatically since then. And I am just completely committed to continuing to help them and help myself and help others. So I run a support group with another woman, Lisa Ellen. It's actually regional and it's online. So anybody can join us, doesn't matter where you are. And you can find out more on my website, drjacqueline.com. I'll post that here. And I also am on the board. I'm the marketing and advocacy chair. And of course, I have a team for this event, a team for SPIN, and I've been involved with the gala. So a big part of my life. This is the Crohn's and Colitis family. Oh, the Guts and Glory run. I forgot about yes. that. So we'd love to have you join us on the 12th of June. It's a fun event. And it really is. you'll meet the networking opportunities are amazing. There'll be about 3,000 people there. And you get to have this amazing experience. Plus, you can stop by the booth or you can man the desk because <laughs> we'll be wanting to walk around as well. So I'll put the information in the comments section if you want to join our team, exactly what you can do. Justin, that leads me to share that we also have another show together, Take Steps and Kick IBD, which we're right. starting back again next week with Dr. Neil Nandi, who will be joining us. He is unbelievable. I mean, not only a great physician, but a great human being. And I, I only met him once and I know that. So I know you know him better than I do, but just, just what a guy. He's a gastroenterologist and right. he just a quick story of how I met him. I was invited to an event and it was at Lincoln Financial Field. It was outside. And then we were going to tour the um, the field and, and the locker room. And this was a few years. This was must have been 2018 or 19. So I right. drove there and I didn't know anybody. They were all in the parking lot. And I kind of just froze because I didn't know a single person. I couldn't recognize anyone. There were people from the foundation that I just didn't see. And he came up to me. And he welcomed me and he said I could hang out with, with him and his family the whole time. And I never forgot that. That's who he is. Yeah. That really is who he is. So he'll be with us next week, the same time as this show, because we're doing this show, Entrepreneur and So Much More, once a month. We may, may go to twice, right? Right. And then we're doing Take Steps twice a month it's at the same time, 5 p.m. Yeah. Eastern Standard Time. We're having fun. <laughs> we are. We're definitely having fun. All right. I don't think we have any more messages, do we? I think that's it. That's it. But it, it was great having Al. He's a he's a really cool guy. I I had known a little bit about him through you, but to to meet him, it was really nice. I just had this feeling. I don't know. I love connecting people. It really means a lot to me. And I think you two are going to do something great together. I don't know what it's going to be, but that'd be I'm awesome. Just glad that I'll remember when we had this introduction. That sounds good. We'll always have it. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Justin and I are signing off for now. Um, Thanks, I'll be everybody. back broadcasting tomorrow. And Justin, really excited for your Talking Head series and for us to come back together next week with Dr. Nandi. Sounds great. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank Take you care. so much for watching. Bye.